In this week's parasha, Parashat B'Shalach, the Torah tells us of the great miracle, the climax of the Exodus, which is the splitting of the Red Sea. The phrase says, Vayibaku hamayim, that the waters split. It doesn't say the sea split. Vayibaka hayam, it says Vayibaku hamayim. And because of this uh, particular idiom, the sages learn, kol hamayim sheboolam, that all of the waters in the world were split, not just the Red Sea per se. Let's try to understand this in, in a pure uh, chemical or physical terminology. Water is H2O. To split water means to split the molecule. Water is a molecule. Molecules composed of different, uh, different basic elements. Here it's H2O, two hydrogen atoms plus one oxygen atom is water. The atomic number of water is 10 because hydrogen is one, so two times one is two, and oxygen is eight. So altogether it's, it's 10. Actually, in the very phrase, Vayibaku hamayim, that the water split, the phrase from which the sages learned that all of the waters in the world split apart, there are ten letters. And when the phrase itself is calculated in a certain numerical calculation, which is called mispar sidri, ordinal numbering, the phrase itself equals 100 exactly, Vayibaku hamayim, meaning that the average value of each letter is 10. There are 10 letters, and it equals 100, which is 10 times 10, meaning the average value is 10. To split water, the simple understanding of splitting water is splitting water into its hydrogen component, which is H2, and its oxygen component, which is, which is O, 8. The illusion in the Torah to splitting 10 into 2 and 8 is, appears very, very strongly in the following parasha that we'll read next week, parasha Yitro, that there are ten commandments. It says the first two commandments we heard directly from the voice, from the mouth of God. Whereas the eight commandments, afterward we heard from Moses, from Moshe Rabbeinu. So we see very clearly that in the ten commandments, the ten divides into two and eight. It's just like a, once more, like a, a water molecule that divides into two and eight. Where do, do we find this t in, in nature itself? Where does it take place? It takes place as one of the, one of the, uh, one of the very, very beautiful phenomena in the photosynthesis process that Light photons, this is one part, one of the reactions that takes place during photosynthesis. It's called photolysis. That a light photon actually results in splitting the water molecules in the, in the plant into the hydrogen part and the oxygen which is released to the air, the air that we breathe. So we can say that the, the concept of splitting all of the waters in the world simultaneously to the splitting of the Red Sea is a very beautiful reference to this phenomenon which is called photolysis. There are other, obviously there are other ways to split ten. Ten can be split into one and nine, it can be split into three and seven, into four and six, or five and five. In the Torah we find all possible splittings of ten. For instance, in the ten sayings of creation, the ten are split into one and nine, because the first one, Breshit, which is also a saying, is an implicit saying. So there's one implicit saying that everything was created ex nihilo. All of the other nine explicit sayings of the ten are not creation, according to Rashi, not creation ex nihilo, but just formation from something to something, changing a form, or taking some amorphous matter and giving it form. So actually the ten sayings split into one and nine. The ten commandments 
in the way that we just saw, split into H2 versus O, because the Torah is likened to water, and water splits into two and eight. The ten plagues split into seven and three, because in the first parasha of Eero, there are seven plagues, and then there are three plagues. In Kabbalah, in general, ten splits into seven and three because seven are the emotions of the heart and three are the intellectual faculties. So the ten, the ten powers of the soul in general split into three and seven. The letter, which is ten in Hebrew, is the letter Yud, the first letter of Hashem's name. When it is written in full, it is written Yud, Vav, Dalit. And the two letters that fill the original letter are Vav and Dalit, which equal six and four, alluding to the fact that the ten itself splits into six and four. Six are relatively male powers of the ten, of the initial ten, and four are the relatively female powers of the ten. So sometimes ten splits into six and four. Even in this very phrase itself, Aibaku Amayim, that has ten letters, and the average value of the ten letters is ten, the, the splitting of the two words is into six letters, Vaibaku, the first word, and its split has six letters to it, and Hamayim, the water, has four letters to it. Five and five is, is as it begins in, in, uh, in the Sefer Yitzhira, the Book of Formation, says that the ten Sfirot are just like the fingers of the two hands, five versus five. It's like the two tablets. It's also in, in, the, in, in relation to the Ten Commandments that we're going to read about next week in the Torah. So the Ten Commandments were inscribed, were engraved upon two tablets of the Covenant. And each tablet had five and five. So actually in the Ten Commandments there are two divisions of ten, either into two and eight, which are the two first commandments that we heard directly from God, and the eight following commandments that we heard from Moshe, or the way they were, they were engraved on the tablets, the two tablets of the covenant, which is five and five. We see that in the Torah there are all possibilities of splitting the water, or splitting the ten into two parts. And the photon, like in this process of photolysis, that it's the photon that enters and, and creates or our, our results, affects this splitting, that photon is like the children of Israel entering entering into the water. Because it says, Or Israel, Israel is a light. So that photon of light, that's what enters the, the, the water molecule and splits it into two. Let's give one final uh, example of how the Yud, the letter Yud, also splits into He and He. The first matriarch of our people, Sarah, her name originally was Sarai. She had a Yud at the end of the name. But in order for, for, for herself and her husband Abraham to merit to, to bear Yitzchak a child, her Yud, which was also her drop of water, at the end of her name, had to split into five and five. And one five, one hay was given to her husband, Avraham, who previously was called Avraham, and now he's Avraham. And the other hay, the other five, remained in her name. So there's one more very beautiful, important example of the ten splitting, of the water splitting into two. So... As we explained before, the water first has to split in order to manifest all of the beauty of its, of its potential, of its infinite potential. And the very photon of light, which is the soul of Israel that enters to, to affect the split, also affects ultimately the unification of the two, of the two dimensions of the water. And then water is all one mime, as we said before, that it's a word that is actually, it's one, but it's in the plural, meaning that one is all and all is one, God is all, all is one, all is God.